coffee. Coffee now! It's early in the morning on the second weekend of rifle hunting season, and I'm decked from head to foot in camouflage gear following two Department of Natural Resources conservation officers into the woods. We settle into a damp hiding spot behind a moss-covered dirt mound and wait, because today we're not hunting deer, we're hunting humans. And it's the sound of a slowly moving truck rumbling down a gravel road that sets us into motion. DNR officers have hidden an animatronic deer across the way in a wooded area just off the road and are hoping frustrated hunters on their way home will take the bait by shooting our decoy deer. If they do, they run afoul of Indiana's hunting rules due to the deer's location and its proximity to the road. We're trying to prevent people from driving around and shooting at the window of a vehicle, which is unsafe, it's unethical, uh, it's not fair chase to the animal. It doesn't give everyone a, a fair sporting chance. If I go out and hunt in a tree stand and sit and get cold and someone else is driving around in a warm vehicle, listening to the music and uh, shooting from the window, that's by no means fair. It uh, really aggravates legal hunters that are sitting in the woods doing it right when there's slobs out there driving the roads, shooting from the window uh, and having a real good time doing it. The deer decoy is made of a foam-like base created for target practice. It's covered in a real deer pelt, so the animal's foam body absorbs the bullets and his furry coat covers any bullet holes. I, mean, I probably got six slug holes yeah, in here. Yeah, I know. No slugs will eat it up, too. The deer's electrical components reside in a narrow area on its neck and behind its tail. A conservation officer operates the deer with a wireless remote that looks like it might be used for a child's RC race car. Conservation Officer Angie Goldman says the movement is meant to make the deer seem more lifelike. She says people have heard enough about the DNR sting operation that it's become almost like an urban legend and causes a few would-be lawbreakers to pause until they see the deer moving. Some even go so far as to get out of their truck or blast their horn before aiming at the deer that looks too good to be true. See, the problem that we're going to have to run into is people like that who figure it out, and then they go call all their buddies on their cell phone. On this day, a few drivers stop, and some even circle back to get a second look at our deer. But none take the bait until dusk begins turning to night, and conservation officers put reflectors in the deer's eyes in an attempt to catch vehicle headlights as they drive by. Conservation officers rush out of the woods, one on foot, another in a chase car, to pull over the offending gunmen who by now realize they've been had. One admits he fired the shot out of his driver's side window. You know, one of the things people think this job is, is very dangerous because we deal with so many firearms and, you know, and people out in the woods. The thing is, it's not bad people. Um, it's, it's good people who just have a lapse of judgment and they make some bad decisions. Officers confiscate and unload the hunter's guns. They'll receive tickets and be required to appear in court, but it could be worse. Conservation officers can arrest offenders and in some cases even confiscate their vehicles. Goldman says she and other officers will be in the field through the end of muzzleloader season, December 19th. We're here, we're in the right place, we've got a deer set out there so it's the right time. Um, now we're just waiting for the poacher to come by. Coffee. Coffee now! <laughs> <laughs>